Hello friends, today we will discuss short paneled concrete and thin white topping. When a concrete overlay is provided on existing bituminous surface, it is called white topping. In case of a conventional concrete pavement, the slab size is generally 3.5 meter into 4.5 meter, whereas short panel concrete pavement can have a slab size from 1 meter by 1 meter to 1.5 meter by 1.5 meter. These are generally square in size. And I explained curling of concrete slabs in one of my earlier videos on design of rigid pavements. To refresh your knowledge, upward curling occurs during night time and downward curling in a slab occurs during daytime. During upward curling, the, sub, the slab surface is cooler and drier than the base, whereas in case of downward curling, the slab surface at a higher temperature and moisture than the base. The larger the slab, more will be the curling. And similarly, thicker slabs curl more than a thinner slab. There are three types of concrete overlays now. One is conventional, another is short paneled, and third is white topping. Conventional and short paneled are also used as a normal rigid pavement. And when they are used as an overlay on a bitmus pavement, then it becomes white topping. So, in case of conventional concrete pavement, as I told you, the slab size is 3.5 meter to 4.5 meter, whereas in case of short paneled and white topping, it is 1 meter by 1 meter or 1.5 meter by 1.5 meter. There is not much difference between short panel concrete pavement feature and a white topping feature. The curling and load stresses are high in a conventional pavement because they are thick and they are larger. And where it is, and it is low, and it is low in case of these two pavements. Loss of support under corners is high in case of thick pavement, and low in case of short panel and white topping. Similarly, critical stress location. In case of a conventional pavement, we consider edge loading as the critical loading, whereas in case of short panel and white topping, it is the corner loading which is critical. Base layer is provided as DLC, here also DLC, and sub base layer either GSP or WBM or WMM. Whereas in case of white topping, it is existing bitmus payment layer which is taken as the base layer or sub base layer. Double bars here in case of conventional concrete payment provided at each transverse joint, whereas only a transverse joint and construction joint only a transfer joint at construction joint. Similarly, tie bars. Now, thickness of these slabs normally more than 200 millimeter. These are less than 200 millimeter. And concrete grade is same in all the three types of pavements. Construction method is same in all the three. Joint sealing. Joints are normally sealed in case of conventional concrete pavement whereas these are not mandatory in case of short panel and white topping pavement. So, as I told you, white topping is a Portland concrete overlay constructed on the top of the existing distressed asphalt pavement. So, it is a PCC resurfacing used as a rehabilitation or structural strengthening alternative on asphalt pavement. There are three types of white topping. One is conventional white topping, where the slab thickness is more than 200 millimeter. Thin white topping, where the slab thickness is 100 to 200 millimeter. And ultra thin white topping, where it is less than 100 millimeter. Now, design procedure for a conventional white topping, that is a plain cement concrete overlay of more than 200 millimeter thickness. Now, these are provided on asphalt pavements that are extremely deteriorated. The pavements with excessive cracking, rutting, shoving are the good candidates for conventional white topping overlays. Thickness of these white topping is designed as per IRC code. 
IRC 58, which I have discussed in detail in another video. Now here, the K value is estimated differently because in IRC 58, the correlation between K value of subgrade and K value of payment with subbase and DLC is given in tabular form. But this code does not provide correlation table for determining effective K value for bituminous surface or bituminous subbase, which will be required for design of conventional white topic. And for that, American Concrete Payment Association, ACPA, has provided two charts for determination of modified K value on the top of bitmus payment. One for granular base and another for cement treated base. And this is the chart. Here on the left side, you have K value of subgrade in MPA per meter. And these are H1 is the thickness of asphalt layer from 5100, 150, 225 or 300 millimeter and H2 is a thickness of granular base. This, this chart is for determination of K value of payment, asphalt payment with granular base. So it can be 100 millimeter to 300 millimeter. Suppose you have an example where the subgrade soil K value is 20 MPa per meter thickness of granular base is 225 millimeter and thickness of asphalt layer 100 millimeter. So you start from here at 20 millimeter and reach to this line, dotted line corresponding to 225 millimeter granular base. And from there you go to H1 that is 100 millimeter asphalt layer thickness and you can read the KT that is the K value of asphalt pavement as 50 MPA per meter. Similarly, you have another chart that can be used to determine K value, effective K value when the base is cement treated base. The procedure is same. Now here instead of granular base, you have the CTB. So again, we take the same example that subgrade K value is 20 MPA per meter and thickness of CTB is now 150 millimeter and thickness of asphalt layer is 100 millimeter. So you start with 20 MPA and go up to the appropriate line for thickness of cement treated base that is 150 millimeter and from this you go upward to the thickness of asphalt layer that is 100 millimeter and on the right side you can read the value of K that is 110 MPA per meter. Now field engineers sometimes prefer to take Benkel mem beam deflection data rather than going for plate load test for subgrade KS. And the deflection value can also be used to determine K value. And here you can use this chart, which is developed by course of engineers. Here you have the characteristic deflection of the pavement is 0.8 millimeter. And from this chart, you can find out the value of KT, that is the K value on top of existing asphalt pavement. The minimum value of K should be taken as 10 kg per centimeter cube. Now thin white topping and, and ultra thin white topping are innovative design emerged in last two to three decades. And these are the characteristics of these toppings. These are short paneled size uh, ranging from 1 meter to 1.2 meter and can be up to 1.5 meter. There is a partial bonding with underlying asphalt layer. High strength concrete is used that is M40 or higher grade and sometimes synthetic fibers can also be used to reduce the plastic cracks, plastic shrinkage, double bars only at transverse construction joints and Tie bars are used only at longitudinal construction joints. Joint sealing is not mandatory. Applications of these are at several locations at on highways and city roads. It, they can also be used on low volume roads in urban streets as well as on village roads, in parking lots, footpaths and residential streets, also at intersections. 
Now in case of thin white topping and ultra thin white topping, breaking of the slab is generally at corner and therefore the critical stress location for the design of this TWT that is thin white topping is the corner and corner stress is due to load as well as temperature are considered to be critical stresses. Stresses due to temperature can be estimated in this equation which is given by ACPA negative temperature gradient that is top cooler than the bottom it will produce tensile curling stresses on the top of the slab at the corner and here alpha is the coefficient of thermal expansion delta T is a negative temperature differential and that is considered 0 0.15 degree centigrade per centimeter depth of the pavement capital L here is length of square slab and LE is radius of relative stiffness. Now all these parameters we have discussed in design of rigid pavement as per IRC 58. Stresses due to load can be estimated using these equations. Here sigma 8 is the bending intensity strength at corner for 8 ton single axle load. Similarly sigma 16 is the bending tensile stress at corner for 16 ton tandem axle load and all these parameters are normal parameters. Let us take one example. Let us say subgrade modulus is 10 kg per centimeter cube. Design period for the pavement is 20 years. Modulus of rupture of the concrete is 45 kg per centimeter square and we take slab size 125 centimeter by 125 centimeter. And if you calculate radius of relative stiffness for this slab, it is 62.15 centimeter. And this is the axle load spectrum at site. Now, how do we calculate expected deputations? Again, you can refer my video on IRC 58. And let us say these are key one. If you know the proportion of number of axle loads in the total traffic, you can determine expected deputations also. So you have axle load from 8 to 16 ton for single axle load and 16 to 24 tons for tandem axle loads. Now to solve this problem, let us take initial trial thickness of 18 centimeter. So modulus of rupture is 45 kg per centimeter square, LE 62.15 it is given, length of slab is also given 125 centimeter. So calculate these stresses for 8 ton single axle using this equation sigma 8 is equal to this equation. So if you substitute value of K L L E in this equation you get log of sigma 8 as 1.0817 and if you take anti log of this you get sigma 8 12.07 kg per centimeter square. Now this is the stress because of 8 ton axle load. Now load stress for single axle of 10 ton, 12 ton, 14 ton, 16 tons are calculated proportionately. There is no separate equation given for calculation of stresses because of 10 ton or 12 ton. These are extrapolated like this that sigma 8 is 12.07 and sigma 10 will be 12.07 multiplied by this factor. Now this factor is 10 upon 8. Sigma 12 will be 12.07 multiplied by 1.5 that is 12.8. Similarly, you can find out sigma 16 also 24.14. Now for load stresses of 16 ton tandem axle is this equation. So again you can put values of parameters here and you get sigma 16 as 16.19 kg per centimeter square and here also load stresses for tandem axle of 20 ton and 24 ton are calculated proportionately. That means sigma 20 will be 16.19 multiplied by 1.25 that is 20.24 and sigma 24 will be 24.28 kg per centimeter square. Now with these values you can frame this table for fatigue life consumed for single axle load. This this part is similar to what we did in IRC 58 design of concrete pavement and when you have axle load of 16 
the stress is 24.14 and stress ratio 0.54 this 0 0.4 0 0.54 is 24.14 divided by 45 that is your modulus of rupture of concrete corresponding to stress ratio 0 0.54 you can find out what will be the fatigue life using the equation given irc 58 and this is the expected repetition so expected repetition divided by fatigue life that is 0.24 is the fatigue life consumed by these axles similarly you can find out for 14 ton 12 ton 10 ton and 8 ton so whenever this is 0.4 or less than 0.4 the fatigue life will be infinity so total fatigue life consumed because of single axle load is 0 0.28 and similarly you can find out how much fatigue life is consumed by tandem axle load that is 0 0.24 so total fatigue life consumed by both tandem axle and single axle is 0.24 plus 0.28 that is 0 0.52 which is less than 1 and therefore design is safe for traffic proposed from fatigue consideration. Now, if you look at the curling stress, is a temperature stress. Temperature stress is given by this equation. Sigma T is equal to 1.933 minus 241,000 to alpha into delta T plus 1.267 L upon LE. Now, alpha is uh, 10 into 10 power minus 6 and delta T, I told you it is 0 0.15 degree centigrade per centimeter of the slab depth. So 0 0.15 into 18 that is minus 2.7 degree centigrade. So if you put all these values you get sigma t 10.96 kg per centimeter square. So total flexural strength because of load and temperature is maximum load stress. Maximum load stress is because of tandem axle 24.29 plus curling stress that is 10.96, 35.25 and this is less than the flexural strength of the concrete that is 45 and therefore design is safe. White topping thickness of 18 centimeter can be provided. Now these details are given in IRC SP 76 2015. Its first edition was brought out in 2008 and revised in 2015. Construction steps, the first step is to mill the existing surface and clean it, then place concrete, finish it and cure it and then early sawing is required, Cur curing and opening to traffic. So first is important point is the bond, bond between the asphalt layer and the concrete layer that should be properly maintained. And the scarification with JCB or maybe because uh, maybe by milling machine and then remove the loose material and then clean the surface. And after cleaning the surface, you place the slab either with fixed form, uh, form paper or using slip form paper. Then there may be some plastic shrinkage cracking and therefore to reduce these cracks synthetic fibers are suggested curing compound can also be sprayed for initial curing and then they can be the slab can be covered with moist jute bags and plastic sheet and curing is done for 14 days the joint sawing cutting of joints is important and they should be cut only up to a depth of h by 3 to h by 4 so friends thank you very much for watching this video i hope you liked it you can write your comments in the comment box